that a young man from Detroit has become known the world over as the Brown Bomber. With his powerful fists, he's blasted his way to the heavyweight championship up. Let's go to the scenes of his mountain training camp and watch this young Hercules in action. 6 a.m. finds him out on the road for his daily six-mile run. There he is on the left, knocking off those miles just as easy as he knocks out an opponent. All of which adds up to a big hearty appetite for breakfast. Joe's the first one at the table. While he reads the sport pages, let's peek in the kitchen. Hurry up that breakfast, chef. The champ's hungry. That aroma of food must smell good to a fella after a six-mile run. Get ready, champ. The vittles are on the way. Now let's watch Joe. He's a champ at the table, too. And it takes plenty of ammunition to supply the dynamite for those fists. Around the training table are the men who guide the ring career of Joe Lewis. There's Jack Blackburn, his trainer. Co-manager. Training camp meals are informal affairs. Everything goes, especially the food. And after breakfast, Joe and his managers plan the day's training activities. Julian Black is the other half of the managing partnership that discovered Joe Lewis had the makings of a champion. And John Roxborough knows that their hunch was right. Yes, the chap likes to read. Besides, this mental relaxation is necessary because there's a hard day ahead. Now, when a fella gets tired of reading, there are lots of other things around a training camp to do. For instance, Joe plays a swell game of pool when he's in the mood. And incidentally, this is the only spot where he ever gets behind the eight ball. Jitterbug Joe, he likes his swing music. In the ring, he swings without the music. But when he relaxes, he swings with it. And Joe has a collection of hot records he plays on his portable phonograph. And when he gets that look on his face, he's being sent. And I mean sent. There are tons of mail from all over the world. Joe couldn't answer half of them if he tried. But he does try to answer some. And here's another important fellow who remains in the background, usually. He's Joe's trainer, Jack Blackburn, who's developed the champ into a cool, calm, powerful engine of destruction. Blackburn's nickname for Joe is Chappie. They're great pals. Now it's time to start some real work. So the champ hikes over to training quarters. Hey, there's a camera fan stealing some of our stuff. Hold that pose, Joe. Nice, we moved in for a close-up just in time. Joe Lewis is one of the friendliest fellows you'd ever want to meet. Outside the ring, of course. These fellows are his sparring partners and camp helpers. To them, the champ is a regular guy. And this bit of horseplay is called whisker matching. No one ever shaves at training camp until the day of a big fight. Look out there, swinging at Joe's chin, even in fun, is dangerous. Say, this is terrible. A fella has to dig the training building out of the snow. But now for the serious part of this training business. It always starts with five minutes of shadow boxing around and around the ring. This warms up the champ, loosens up his muscles, and gets him ready for rounds of boxing with his sparring partners. There's Jack Blackburn in the champ's corner. He greases Joe's face and puts on his gloves. Joe's sparring partners are the highest paid in the business, and don't you think they don't earn every cent of their money either? He doesn't fool around in the ring. He gives his sparring partners terrific punishment, and they have to fight or else. But the champ's a pretty regular guy. He doesn't like to knock him out, and it would be tough if he couldn't find any more sparring partners to box with. Joe's footwork has only earned the title of Shuffling Joe. He knows how to handle his underpinnings. No effort wasted, no stumbling about. Looking around outside the ring, we find these lady visitors taking in the action. Joe moves in a semi-crouch, fists ready for anything. And the champ is really best at counterfighting. Lead to him, and he usually jolts you with a swift left jab or hook. When he whips across a murderous right, after that, curtain. Those rapier-like lefts have the rapidity of a lightning streak and can do just about as much damage. 
Experts have raved over the marvelous accuracy with which Joe throws his punches. These workouts on the punching bag help to develop that. Notice that left. I said notice it, but don't ever get in front of it. Skipping rope is an old exercise for fighters. They do it even more than little girls, and much better, too. Skip, skip, skip. That develops the footwork. So the champion finishes his training day with flying colors. And need I mention that being a champ is no bed of roses. Oft times there are important visitors around camp. Here's Jim Braddock says, good luck. Even after all that exercise, the champ still looks as fresh as a daisy. Always in the pink of condition, he's the idol of countless thousands. Standing six feet, one and three quarter inches tall, weighing 200 pounds, with biceps 14 inches around, and a three inch chest expansion, this young ring warrior has given the boxing world some of its most outstanding ring action and knockouts, such as Carnery in the sixth round. Bear in the fourth. Braddock in eight rounds when he won the world's heavyweight championship title. And as Champy beat Schmeling in one round. The hero of crowds wherever he goes, Joe Lewis has not been affected by fame. Photographers, cheering fight fans, and other things that can annoy a champion. After a fight, the champ's most cherished reward is a great big thick steak. And here he is in Harlem after a victory having just such a steak. His favorite dessert is ice cream, and there's Henry Armstrong, two champions. Consequently, two plates of ice cream. And these fellas start out on a great big ice cream bin. Behind the scenes of a weigh-in before his fights, Joe Lewis still retains that calm and coolness that has paralyzed opponents before the gong. When he met John Henry Lewis, Doctors who examined Joe were amazed at his calm manner before battle. Nothing seems to bother him. Even the newspaper's flashbulbs going off in his face doesn't bother Joe. It was the same cold, calm Joe Lewis who defended his title against a man of his own race, posed pleasantly with John Henry Lewis at the weigh-in, and then knocked him out in the one round that evening. Joe Lewis remains king of the ring. His might under Brown Barber blasts down all before him who challenges title of heavyweight of the world. 